Hey, what's up, 2KB Outdoors friends and family? Bass Balls coming to you with a requested walkthrough on the 2022 tournament season fully rigged Old Town Topwater 120 PDL. Now, all of the modifications and the equipment I have on my kayak for the tournament season may or may not fit your needs. Uh, I'm going to drop a link for all of the equipment that I have, any mods that I've done in the description below, and maybe some of it will help you out. If it does, that is wonderful. If it doesn't, it's still also wonderful. Maybe it gives you ideas for what you'd like to do with your kayak, just different equipment. Either way, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you like the walkthrough. I hope you really like the content of this uh, walkthrough, and uh, keep ripping lips. All right, guys, so as we said, this is a full walkthrough video of all the equipment modifications that I've made on the Old Town Topwater 120 PDL. Again, uh, these modifications and this setup was what most benefits me for my tournament season, uh, and I hope you find something useful here. So what we'll do is we're going to start right up here at the bow mount trolling motor. This is the... Motor Guide XI3, 36 inch shaft, designed specifically by the Motor Guide company for kayaks. Um, show you here how we mount and dismount this trolling motor. This is a quick release bracket sold by Motor Guide. Uh, makes loading and unloading the kayaks or the trolling motor off the kayak super easy. Now, what we want to talk about here are these two mounts this mount and this mount. Uh, this mount is designed specifically for the Old Town uh, bow-mounted system. Uh, it's made by one objective. Uh, it's custom fitted for the bow mount for this Motor Guide XI3. Uh, this is the Motor Guide quick release bracket. Uh, these are sold separately. This Motor Guide quick release bracket just mounts directly onto the one objective bracket. And then the, the trolling motor is able to just sit up there real nice and clean. Um, this mounts. As you can see right here, this mounts into a screw right through the hole. And then the other mount is right up under here, uh, goes through the drain plug system. They send you a new drain plug with a screw hole already in it um, so that you don't have to make any modifications to the drain plug that came with it. Uh, nonetheless, super lightweight, again, 36 inch shaft, designed specifically for the kayaks. Uh, now I will, I will make a, again, I'm going to drop the, the stuff in the description below for where I got all of my equipment for my setup, uh, just your standard wire. Uh, I make use of the bungees on the hull hatch to retain my cabling and it just comes right out here. And then I put in a, um, you know, just a plug and receptacle for the trolling motor uh we'll take this hatch off right here we'll talk a little bit about what's in this hatch um this hatch here is where i store my yak power system as you guys can see uh don't mind the wiring it's not a, it's not the cleanest job in the world but it, again this works for me uh just drilled a couple holes in here and ran a zip tie through to maintain my cords um so that we can have everything as clean and as neat as possible through here as well <laughs> inside this um inside this mount or uh, this this hole 
uh, hatch is also where my transducer cable runs through to this through hole scupper mount uh, Old Town comes with and underneath there is a mount plate that's already in place. Uh, this one was set up for the wiring, uh, the clean wiring system for the transducer mount. So that's how I have that program there. And again, all of my stuff um, that is not the trolling motor, for example, uh, my my battery for my graph so obviously is in the Yak Power, but all my wiring for my graph um, and from the Yak Power system is under there. Also, all the wiring for my navigation lights, which we'll cover in just a few moments. Uh, and again, that's the Yak Power system. It's the five switch uh, panel power panel for the for the Yak Power. Um, I can run two different setups, which one is where I run my graph and two is where I run my internal lights and my navigation lights. I've got a bow and a stern plug set up right now, as you can see here. It's just a plug and play SAE that comes with the Yak Power system. Uh, I use this to power up GoPro. Um, and then the stern is also another GoPro right now. The midships, when I add more interior decking lighting, I'm gonna put another plug in probably somewhere here in the side wall of the gunnels uh, for another plug and play for some more interior lighting on the kayak. Uh, let's move right over now to the graph. I am running the Garmin UHD 93 SV. This is the side view. Nine inch display has side view, clear view, which is their down scan and also 2D sonar, traditional chirp sonar. Uh, comes loaded with U.S. Lakes uh, for the Navionics system. So uh, excellent upgrade. This is probably one of the easiest graphs that I've ever tried to use. I've had uh, Lowrance, I've had Hummingbird, and then I upgraded to this Garmin just this past off season uh, just for ease of use. And then right here, I have a Yak Attack uh, mount that I run my GoPro, my rear-facing GoPro that'll be faced towards me so that you can catch all the live action of any catches. <laughs> Excuse me, on this side, this little mount right here, I've used this for a, a spotlight, uh, forward-facing spotlight, so that when I'm out at dark, if I'm fishing any night times, I can have this spotlight here to, you know, show me where I need to go. Uh, right in front of that, you guys are gonna see the single roto grip from Yak Attack. Uh, I use this to hold my Yak Attack leverage net in place. Keeps it nice and clean and out of the way. Uh, doesn't really uh, detract from any functionality of my track, my, my rail system. Also allows me easy access to my, to my net when I need to access it. Uh, moving forward, as you can see, I have two rods and real staging area here. Um, Old Town does a real good job of providing these under seat staging for uh, laying down your rods right up through the tracks. There's two of them there. Uh, does a real good job there. Keeps it nice and clean, keeps the deck kind of organized. Uh, just your basic pockets. I uh, keep my um, split ring pliers and line cutter there. Uh, and I can keep any plastics or whatever I need there as well. Uh, for the seat, uh, I did elect to go with the upgraded seat on the Old Town. Um, actually the, the guy that I purchased this from had already had both seats so uh, I do utilize this I just picked this up in the meantime I am looking to get a um, uh, kayak cushion uh, both the, the cush bar for the back support and for the lower seat but this will, this certainly makes it more comfortable to sit if you're uh, if you're having to sit long amount of time for you know for fishing or whatever the case may be picked it up from Walmart for like seven or eight bucks uh, here we got the rudder control, which using the trolling motor, we don't have to use much of the rudder, rudder but when we do, uh, when we're in situations where it calls for the pedal drive, deploy the rudder. This is the uh, steer control for the rudder system. Got our pedal, our paddle ho holder here, just mounted into the side of the kayak. It's got the, it's got the taco clasp on it. Keeps the paddle nice and secure right on the side. Uh, we'll talk about PFDs, guys. This is the most important thing in kayak fishing. Um, I mean, obviously, you want to have a kayak that, that fits your needs. But overall, 
you need to make sure that you have a PFD or personal flotation device that you trust. So um, I went with the NRS Chinook. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, very breathable. Um, it's got the high back padding on it so that it makes it more comfortable when you're sitting in your, in your kayak for long periods of time. <laughs> this old town comes with one forward facing uh, rod holder. If you're needing to retie or whatever the case may be, uh, it's just forward facing. You can have it there for convenience and retie as needed. Um, right back here, I keep this uh, this bag. This Cast King bag is full of stuff for like uh, my my quick access soft plastics and things like that. Things that I may need to grab quickly. Um, I keep my uh, VMC ring tool for the wacky rig in there again it's loaded with lots of plastics uh very important that you have quick access to that uh, we'll move on to the yak gadget crate now guys this is a, a fairly new addition here this yak gadget crate uh this is the low pro xd with the five inch risers or four and a half inch risers for the base uh without the risers this unit would not fit securely in the, the tank well of the kayak so I did have to get the risers for that. But as you can see, it holds comfortably six of the Plano 3700s. I mean, I've got everything in here from chatterbaits to some soft plastics, jigs, crankbait box, spinnerbait and buzzbait box, and then also a, a topwater box that I use. Uh, it comes with this nice cover with a zipper on it where you can... Uh, you know, you can store your scales or fish grips or anything like that that you need to store. Stores quite easily in there. Uh, makes access on the water very, very efficient. Um, as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the Low Pro XD, I have all six of the rod mounts on it, the rod holders. Um, again, I don't like to have to stop and retie a whole lot. So as you can see, um, all six of the rod holders are on the low pro xd crate by yak gadget uh, and again it just makes it more convenient for me this may not work for you may not work in your kayak but it makes it more convenient for me to be out on the water and just be able to pick and go uh, if i need something i can just pick it up and go whether it be changing from a crankbait or a lipless spinnerbait something like that to say maybe a texas rig or a, uh, a wacky rig or shaky head whatever the case may be uh, just makes it easier to pick it up and go. Uh, right here, you got the rudder system for the Old Town top water. It comes with a bungee strap to hold it down uh, when it's not being deployed. It's also got a pretty nice handle here and then also a handle here for being able to maneuver the kayak as you need to. Uh, we'll move around to the other side here. As you guys see, I store my uh, catch board right behind the seat. I have it tethered off to the seat with a little tether and a carabiner hook. Uh, again, it's just easy access. If I need to get it off, I just unclip it, pull it out, get it right up there, get my fish on the board, measured, and back in the water as quickly and efficiently and safely as possible for the fish. Again, that's what we're looking out for, guys, uh, is how we can take care of the fish. Um, and again, you know, just molded in handles. Um, extremely important for being able to maneuver the kayak as we need to. Uh, here, and again, don't use it too much when I'm using the trolling motor, but this is the deployment system for the, uh, for the rudder. Uh, it is in stow mode now, so facing forward, it's all the way in the stow or towards the bow. When I have it um, in stern position, the rudder would be deployed down. Uh, so real nice feature, very sturdy handle there. Uh, and again, this gives me everything that I need out of my kayak for the tournament season. Now, I will tell you a couple couple little things I've done. Uh, this is a new upgrade that I just made. Actually, just put them on today, and I've got to finish securing them. But these seat risers are extremely important for those of you that are going to be out on long water trips, and I'll show you why. Um, as you, some of you may or may not know with the old town, uh, when it is out on the water for hours, um, it can be kind of tedious on the back. So... When you don't have the when you don't have the seat risers in place, the seat is in the lower back position. It's rested. 
uh, and it makes get, standing up, getting up and down uh, much more working, work out, I should say, much more effort to stand up and sit down in the kayak when you're uh, when you're running it without the uh, seat risers. So I order these seat risers. You can get them in packs of two. They come. They have some. Uh, Yak Hobby is who makes them, and they have them in the forward and rear uh, seat riser options. And again, it just makes it makes having the ability to have that seat up at that flat angle much easier to stand up in, much easier to fish, much easier to maneuver the kayak. Um, so very important part that I added again, uh, as you guys can see, it's made by Yak Hobby. Um, it's 3D, 3D printed, custom molded for the Old Town Topwater and Sportsman Series. They will fit either one. So uh, go check out Yak Hobby. Very, very good tool to have for those of you that are going to be on the water for longer periods of time. Um, and last but not least, running the trolling motor, running the XI3 is extremely, extremely uh, for when I'm out fishing longer periods of time, when I'm out fishing uh, in high wind or high current, um, it makes ease of access that much easier having this trolling motor. Uh, but I could not, and I would be remiss not to mention this a lot, maintain the power on my kayak without that right there. Enduro power lithium batteries, uh, by far the best battery on the market, uh, in my opinion. Um, I've have to, you know, so many inconsistencies out in the water, whether it be water temperature, wind, current, uh, you know, what the fish are chasing. And, and as anglers, what we're looking for is consistency. Um, and that Enduro power lithium battery provides me all the consistency I need. Um, 12 volt, 100 amp hour. You can go check them out at EnduroPowerBatteries.com. Again, I'm going to drop the link in the description below. Uh, but that keeps, and I'm, I'm not going to deploy the trolling motor, but that certainly keeps the trolling motor uh, powered up. Uh, I run the trolling motor off of this little fancy-dancy handheld remote. And, uh, you know, I can use uh, anchoring system or spot lock. Uh, keeps you in within a, a five uh, cubic foot area radius uh, for fishing when you're sitting in current or high winds. You don't have to worry about battling with the paddles or the pedals or repositioning, moving your trolling motor around. This will do it for you. Uh, and then also we got the heading lock, which will keep you on a certain heading. Um, and and it goes. I mean, it goes wide open. Uh, and I never have to worry about losing power from first deployment to last deployment uh, with the Enduro Power Lithium battery. So um, I've got that wired up, and I'll move this seat down a little bit. I've got that wired up, and again, all my wiring is through the through the hole. Uh, got it coming out right here. Just used a Yak Attack through hole mount. Uh, use that mount to keep the wiring nice and clean, keep them out of the way. And I uh, also deployed a in this hole, this little compartment here, um, as you may or may not be able to see, and I hope you can, uh, but I deployed a 60 amp waterproof breaker right there. Um, just if something were to happen and it tripped the breaker, I just reach behind me, take the seat off, or take the cover off this hatch, and uh, go right to town on getting it reset. So. Again, everything that's on here for me was set up for convenience, ease of use, um, stuff like that. I've got some <laughs> tank well lights, as you guys can see right here, um, and I'll power those up so that you can see those. Those are those are my navigation and my tank well lights. Uh, all of it, again, is ran off the Yak power system, and it's basically just plug and play. Um, as you can see here, you just plug in, i say as you can see, like I can't really see it because I'm trying to maintain the, vi the view from the phone for you guys, uh, but it's just plug and play. Now you plug this SAE cable up, 
power the yak power box up come right over here to my switch that five position switch and again you just power it up there and i'm just going to show you the navigation lights remember number one is what i run my graphs on number two is my navigation lights and as you can see i installed these uh, blue leds in the front and in the back um, just so when i'm out at night it's not too bright in my eyes, but it, it does make it easier to see uh, what I'm doing in the tank well. And then I also run my navigation lights off of the same power. So keep me safe out on the water. Um, and, and again, it does a couple different things with the Yak Power. One of the, one of the nicer things about it is uh, this old town comes with a tracking system right here. And I have a another one of the plug and play uh, SAE plug and play ports here where I um, run my second GoPro my forward facing GoPro app and so that's pretty much a a just of the full breakdown again I will post the link in the description for all of the equipment that I have used any mods that I've made uh, and maybe it'll help a future kayak angler be prepared for their tournament season biggest thing i can recommend to you guys is again pfd is vital uh, get you a very good don't don't skimp on money on your pfd get you one that matters and before you go and get any kayak or make any mods make sure they fit what you need for your safety your ease of access out on the water Again, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the walkthrough on the 2022 tournament season fully rigged Old Town Topwater 120 PDL. If you have any questions, again, feel free to drop a comment. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.